Hi everyone! In this Mission to Mars video, we're going to be talking about the next step in developing a mission to Mars, and that's operating on the surface of Mars. Joining us today to help us understand how we do that is Emilio Kure, he, him, a mechatronics engineer on the Mars Perseverance rover. Thanks for joining us today, and welcome! Thanks for inviting me. Super excited to be here. Once we arrive at Mars, what do the spacecraft actually do on the surface? So the first thing we do when we land on the surface of Mars is we do a health check. Uh, we have to make sure that everything is working correctly after its journey to Mars. Kind of think of it as the warm-up stretches you do before you start exercising. Then we can start unstowing parts of the rover so it can start looking around. Even before the spacecraft lands on Mars, we've taken every day within probably the first 90 days and we start planning what the spacecraft is going to do each day. We aren't taking a joystick and driving the rover around. We very carefully plan what we're going to be doing. Of course, things can change depending on where we land and what we learn every day. But in general, there's an overarching plan. The spacecraft can take pictures and measurements of what's around it, check out the environment before it starts to uh, drive if it has wheels. And then in the example of Perseverance, uh, with the suite of science instruments it has, we'll also be drilling into rocks on Mars. Now when we're operating on the surface and using the science instruments and taking pictures, how do we communicate with the spacecraft? Yeah, so we have something called the Deep Space Network, which is a network of satellite dishes placed all around the world. So there's one in California, one in Australia, and one in Spain. And this placement of antennas allow us the best coverage of the sky to communicate with our spacecraft. So when communicating with the spacecraft on Mars, we use the orbiters that are going around Mars to communicate with the spacecraft that are on the surface. For example, we'll send data from Perseverance's antenna to the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that's going around in the sky, and then that data will then get sent back to Earth. That sounds like a lot of activity and a lot of information being sent back and forth between Earth and Mars. Do scientists and engineers operate the rovers 24 hours a day? So at first, during critical events, when we're entering the atmosphere of Mars, we do have engineers and scientists available 24 hours a day, just in case. But afterwards, we actually go on something called Mars time. Uh, because the days are longer on Mars than they are on Earth, um, all the teams go on the same schedule for when it's daytime on Mars, so we can communicate with the rover that has just woken up. With all of the planned operations on Mars, are there activities or events that the rover can do without help from Earth? Yeah, so now that we've come so far in our technology development, where the rover can sort of choose its own path, so we can say, we want you to drive you know, over to that rock pile today. And so it can take pictures and look around and determine what path is the safest to take and then take that path. Thanks so much for joining us today, Amila. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about operating on the surface of Mars, the next step in developing a mission to Mars. You're welcome. I love talking about my work and I love sharing the excitement of space. Now that we've heard why this is important, you're ready to operate your mission. Stay tuned for the next step in developing a mission to Mars, and that's handling Mars samples.